Everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, hope everybody's cool. Um, welcome to the uh, finding your story behind the lens of uh, this partnership with the Chicago Public Library, uh, Media, and also the John Wall Foundation. Um, if folks have questions, um, or you know, want to shout anything out, please put it in the chat. Um, I also, you know, would love to see what y'all say in the chat. Um, you know, let's have a conversation. Uh, but yeah, my name is um, Chris. Um, I'm a uh, photographer. Um, folks maybe know me as thought poet. Um, and yeah, I, I guess I could get in a little bit into myself um, as a photographer, right? Um, so yeah, I guess where I can start is uh, kind of like where I started with doing a lot of work in the um, music community or the Chicago community, right? So I started a lot of um, work with like journalism, so like music journalism. So if folks have heard of True Star Magazine, um, After School Matters, um, young Chicago authors, uh, U Media. <laughs> that was actually a lot of like where I started from uh, when it came to just like you know learning about uh, just like Chicago's culture, right? So I would say I kind of came in right about the time when you know Chief Keith was like, uh, I guess he was like that. He was that guy, right? So like you know everyone loved him. You know um, everyone that knew about Chicago music loved him. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, uh, Katie got banned, Sasha go hard, you know, I can go on, right? And so, um, you know, I always had a camera around me um, or I always kind of had a like an eye for like like really cool photos, especially, you know, uh, interviewing or talking to like Chicago artists and being around Chicago related stuff. Um, but, you know, kind of like with everything in the, in, the, in the city, you know, things change, you know, people grow up. And so, you know, I started just kind of thinking like, you know, why don't I just take my photography more seriously, right? And so um, I kind of just started taking photos. And so, you know, um, I came from a really artsy background. Like my grandma, um, she was a doll maker, you know what I'm saying? So like, she always had my nose in the Gordon Parks book uh, when I was a kid. And so, you know, I kind of just went from there, right? And so, um, especially doing a lot of organizing in, in the city, um, but also just like really having a very, deep love for Chicago music. Like I just started taking photos, right? And so, you know, it would just be like little snapshots on my phone um, that I was broke. You know, I didn't, I didn't have money to buy a camera, let alone buy a laptop. And so, you know, I, I just kind of went with what I knew, you know what I'm saying? And I kind of, you know, uh, just used what I had around, me, right? And so at the time, you know, also being homeless, you know what I'm saying? All I had was my phone, you know what I mean? And I, had, I was, uh, lucky enough to have a, a, a friend give me like, a, this is like way before iPhone was like iPhone 10. This is like iPhone three or four. <laughs> um, but like the camera was really crappy on it. Like I think it was broke actually, the camera, but I was just like, yo, like, I could I could make this work, right? And so um, I think in this workshop, I think, you know, the one thing I want y'all to remember, I want people to remember is that you really can make anything happen with whatever you have around you. It's more so just how consistent you want to be about it, right? Um, I think um, for folks that know about John Wall and who John Wall was, like that was one thing that he really, you know, he was just adamant about was just being consistent as just like, not even just as being a creative, being a human being, right? And so that was one thing that I, I just kept going with, right? And I just kept trying to be consistent with, you know, taking photography and, you know, um, just even learning what I could about it, right? While also trying to, you know, 
balance out my life as a homeless kid that was, you know, trying to finish college. You know what I mean? So um, I think, like, for real, for real, when I started taking my photography seriously was uh, when my grandmother finally helped me, like, uh, buy my first camera. It was like a secondhand camera or whatever. But um, I loved it, right? And so uh, I kind of just stepped, I kind of kept going from there, right? And so people saw me with a camera, you know, and people knew I was also, like, a writer. You know, they, they was like, okay, cool, you know, let's see what you can do. And so... You know, um, I just kept having conversations with people, you know what I'm saying? And, I, and again, that's something that John Watt was really, that was his biggest thing, man. Like, he, he would really have a conversation with you, and he would really make sure that you um, knew what it was that he was doing, right? And so I kept trying to kind of, like, implement that and kind of, like, how I did things. And so, um, you know, I would definitely go around and be like, yo, like, you know, let's you wanna just shoot, you want to build, you know what I'm saying? You want to connect or whatever, and so... You know, we would shoot. You know what I mean? A lot of the uh, photography that I have, um, it really is based off of, you know, me just shooting with the homies. You know what I'm saying? And so um, from that, that's when I really, you know, began to understand kind of my uh, way of, like, shooting and just creating. And so um, I, I don't know. I think I kind of created a style from it, right? And so, again, because I was consistent, that's why I started to really figure out, like, okay, I like when I, you know, edit my photo like this or I like if I you know uh have my photo look a little like that right and so um kind of fast forwarding into you know um last year you know that's when I think for me I really started like noticing how my work was affecting other people um and the thing is I wasn't doing anything any different than what anyone else could do like right now right like I I, I went on social media I went on Instagram particularly because I, I use Instagram a lot um and uh right like the, the 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 second day or not even the second day the, the day where every, like all the protests were taking place last year in 2020 um i just went live and and i just talked and i just really said what i felt right and and this was the day before i got arrested by the police myself um and so yeah uh, i think one thing I want to do is uh, bring up uh, some videos, um, kind of like show y'all a little bit of the imagery that um, I was talking about. And so, um, yeah, we're going to queue up some videos really quick uh, and we're going to get into those and then uh, we're going to get more into the photography aspect of it. So, yeah. Vision so imminent. You should mind your business. First, I had a dream. I planted seeds and now I'm living it. Ooh. <laughs> Don't sweat the technique. Cool. Yeah, real, real, cool. Cool. Real, 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 Yeah. real, 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 if you think about our everyday neighborhoods, even just thinking about the relationships that we have with our neighbors and, and people and just people that your family members and stuff like that. So I always think about when not having police is like being in a system where people, our people, us, the people, run the, the matters that be. And it's, and it's also in a restorative way. So what does abolition look like for me? I don't know, I feel like when I imagine abolition, it's just somebody's face. And the person I think is like a trans, black, queer person. It's always someone who, you know, always has to be fighting for something. Because I feel like a lot of times when it is, when you, you look at an abolitionist, that's most likely what you're going to see. Somebody who is black, trans, queer, any part of these communities who have been undermined for such a long time. And they're like, all right, it's time for me to actually get up and do something about this. I'll just go off the vibes, like seriously. It doesn't even matter at this point. I'm like an artist. 
I'll fucking oh, die from my heart, but I'll also kill you for your love. Whoa. I love you so much, I'll kill you. Oh, whoa. I'll kill you. Yeah. I kill you. Yeah. I kill you. Love you so much, I kill you. From a past life, but you don't know me. Guess I'm in your wash. You could be, could go me half demons, so the world get lonely. Spoke to early, world gray, Earl gray, sipping tea. The sun of morning ain't none. I'm done with morning. I hate myself so many love me. Finish last to finish early. Mr. Class past the four. I'm just trying to make a plot. I'm just trying to make a spot. I'm just trying to make a plot. I'm just trying to make a stop. Cause ain't no headstones, nigga. Ain't no headstones. No headstones, nigga. Just see me how the world gon' do. See me on a come up with the world gon' do. At the Spirits I fear is low People screaming right the wrongs He lay down on the ground She was asleep safe and sound They point, shoot and kill Swing your left air I we still How do niggas feel about J. Cole and No Name and that whole rap beat? <laughs> Wait, who is J. Cole? J. Cole, J. Cole, J. Cole I started hearing about J. Cole when he tries to be like, oh, like, I say fag because I'm trying to take back the words. Like, well, you're not one of us, so you can't take it back. In the afternoon, right on my avenue, act a fool, act in school, so they were stupid. Five, yeah, they was that confused, trapped in two lines, equal sign, but my value, absolute. I, don't, I, don't, I feel like he's one of the, like, the most, like, the pioneer of, like, respectability politics in, like, the black community, and everyone just follows him because, like, they connect, like, God with him for some reason. Ah, Christianity, we're gonna save the world. And he really doesn't do anything. He's very into black. I feel like incorporating, like, that it's just not about to work. Um, so I don't really care. I don't know why people look after him. I never heard him say like the actual political statement that made sense with that, but it's okay. So is that saying that Jesse Jackson is corny? Hmm? 
So are we saying that Jesse Jackson is corny? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I didn't even work for my money, so I need it now. I I pulled up, I got my windows on my speakers loud. I when he left too soon, if only she could see me now. Walk right off to 90, I might go and see him now. I see them at like they cannot see when we around. I I forgot what hey feel like I cannot keep around. I wrong papers if it's Yeah, we don't need no cops. We don't, we don't need no cops. We don't need no cops. We don't, we don't Hey everyone, um, work. So I hope uh, folks enjoyed those videos. So um, the first one, uh, well, I just, uh, to get into uh, just both of the videos, right? Um, a lot of the, both of the videos uh, concentrated a lot on um, a lot of the scenes and a lot of the, uh, the actions that a lot of organizers, youth organizers um, put together last year in 2020. Um, and uh, again, a lot of them uh, based on a lot of uh, photos that I put out uh, so like they're all on my website and you know Instagram and social media whatever. But um, the whole point of me doing that was me really just kind of wanting to do something that I had done before, right? And so um, again, going back to the consistent aspect, uh, I, that was again like uh, I was trying to figure out like what was another way that I could make sure my photos or the story that I'm trying to tell about the city, like what, what was just another way I could do that, right? And so you know me creating me always being around art me always being around photography um that was one thing i definitely wanted to focus on when i you know started telling the stories and um just started creating and like putting things together and so um that was just one that was, that was just something i really wanted to focus on when i put those visuals together um and yeah you know that's that's kind of just what that what they were uh and so uh, the cool part is that a lot of those clips, like it's nothing that you can't do yourself, right? Like, I think in both of those videos, I got a lot of that footage on my camera. Um, I did some editing in Adobe. Um, and like I said, I just kind of had a really thought out plan for like how I wanted to envision something. And I think that's just, you know, what is the important part is like the dreaming part, right? So it's like when you're out and about and you're like in your community, like, why is your community important? You know what I mean? And for me, I know my community is important because like the beauty is like so much beauty in culture, particularly on the south and west side of Chicago, specifically in Inglewood, right? And so when I go out and I shoot, that's what I like aim for. I, I try to tell stories that people may know, but people from Chicago or people that are not from Chicago, right? And the thing is, like I'm not talking about nothing no different. Like, you know, for example, if you go to uh, 87th right now on the south side, there's no theater. There. But like the 87th theater was like the kingdom of where you had fun at when you were little. You know what I mean? Like um, the Heralds is no longer there, but like you know, Heralds is like a staple in Chicago food and just Chicago culture in general. And that bothers me. You know what I mean? Like that bothers me that these places are no longer there, and like these black and brown people can't enjoy this part of the community. And so. When I do take photos, when I do go out and you know shoot or whatever it is I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure that there's a story attached to it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, hopefully that went too deep, but um, I want to hopefully uh, get into some of these questions. Um, I see like there's a bunch of questions in the chat, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna hop into it. Um, someone said, "What's my favorite lens? Uh, my favorite camera lens? Uh, my favorite camera lens? Actually, I." Well, interestingly enough, I don't really have a favorite camera lens. Um, and that's only because I've gone through so many camera lenses uh, that were not mine. Like I borrowed them or um, not encouraging, but I stole them. <laughs> um, and so uh, I think I just kind of learned that it's not the lens, it's not the camera lens, it's the person that's behind the camera, right? And so 
Um, best example I can give you is uh, one shot that I think is like just dope that I can stick up the top of my head is just like standing in front of a corner store, or, like going and going and standing in front of like a, a, a church, right? That's like out south or out west. And if you just acknowledge, if you, if you really look at like the atmosphere of like what's on that corner, it's so much like culture and atmosphere and beauty. And it's like the only way you can see that is if you're actually like taking in what you see, right? So you can have an iPhone, you can have a uh, quote unquote Android, you can have a whatever, but it's the perspective that that person has. And the lens, like the camera, the the the, the vessel even that you use to take away, it, it comes kind of afterwards, right? Um, someone said, what is my top five list photographers? Um, top five photographers. Mm -hmm. hmm. You know what? I got you. So, uh, yeah, Gordon Parks for sure. I love Gordon Parks. Uh, I'm gonna give you four uh, local uh, local photographers. Um, yeah, so Chelsea Dreams, um, a black woman. Uh, I think her Instagram is like Chelsea Dreams. Um, amazing, amazing photographer. Um, kid, the kid from Pilsen. Um, amazing organizer and photographer uh, and videographer. Um, I think of another person. Um, Oscar Sanchez, uh, he's also an organizer. Um, also, Ali Almore, uh, who's a black queer woman. Um, amazing, amazing photographer. Um, who are three other photographers from the city? Uh, all three favorite photographers from the city? Hmm. Uh, let me see. If you know, uh, oh my God, um, I'm. I'm blanking on his last name, but if you look up uh, this, this young man named Avery, uh, he's a young photographer, very powerful photographer. Um, he's done, he, he does a lot of work in the community. Um, Caleb, uh, I think if you look him up on Instagram, it's almost like Caleb Altman. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, but yeah, amazing, amazing organizer and photographer. Um, other favorite photographer from the city. Um, uh, if y'all want to look up Nolis, that's another uh, dope photographer. Um, he's done like a lot of dope work. Like I, I, I would just say, look him up on Instagram. He's amazing. Um, see, someone says, besides your phone, what's a good camera for beginners? Um, so the first camera that I had when I started out was a Canon. Um, it was a DSLR. It was a Rebel. And if we being like exact, like you could go to, you, you, you can go online, like Google, um, you could like pick it up from like a camera shop. Um, for folks that are like being more specific, like you could literally go on like Craigslist, um, you know, responsibly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, 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 uh, I would say a Canon, um, a Canon DSLR Rebel. Um, the DSLR, like that's a brand of camera. So that's like the digital, um, which is, you know, that's one way to go. That's what I use. Um, you got film cameras, but like as far as like for folks that are just starting out, I would definitely say uh, the the Canon or Nikon. Because um, the funny thing is, when you like if you work with a Sony, Canon, Nikon, um, or any other camera brand, any photographer will tell you like you you do have to kind of get used to the configuration of the camera, right? And so kind of going back into what I was saying earlier, use what's more comfortable for you, right? So like. Again, when I was on my phone, I definitely had a lot of editing apps. So I had editing apps like Visual Supply Company, um, which is like VSCO if you look it up. Uh, I use that a lot. I use it to this day, actually. Um, Lightroom from Adobe, uh, uh, Photoshop from Adobe. Um, yeah, like, uh, but also it's like, even like when you're like taking the shot, right? Like you want to try to make sure you're getting as much in the shot as possible. So again, what makes what you're comfortable with shooting, that's what is like work that's that's what works for you. Um somebody said, you see any value in selling pictures and stock websites? Maybe find a niche and try to create value. That's a good question. Um I have not necessarily got into uh selling pictures to stock websites. Um I do feel like that could be effective. Um, but to be completely honest with you, like I think it also depends on as a creative or as a photographer or someone that's like creating with imagery, it's like, what do you want to produce, right? Um, so when it comes to stock websites, uh, I, to my knowledge, that kind of is what like helps. Like when you, so if you Google um, like a black woman in a salon, right? 
um, you may see two to three photos maybe of like black women in the salon and it's like really corny. So like she may not even be getting her hair done or it does not look like an actual salon, right? It don't look like a, like, like, like a salon that you would see on the south or west side of Chicago. And so, you know, that when, when I when I like when my uh, photo series Heart Melanin that that was that was one of my biggest that is one of my biggest goals is to create you know photos portraits um, just like anything that you would see that comes that when you think about Black America but also Black Chicago right um, so yeah I, I think it's a good idea um, I haven't necessarily gotten into it completely yet uh, I know some people that are uh, but I also think as far as like finding your niche. Um, that's a bad, that that is a bad, that's a question. Finding your niche. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, when I so and again, um, I, I said this earlier, but when I got arrested uh, at a protest uh, last year, I had actually stopped shooting. I had actually stopped um, uh, taking photos uh, just because, like, I, I was being harassed by police. Um, I, I was going through a very traumatic uh, domestic abuse relationship. Uh, I was just going through a lot, right? And so, um, to be honest with you, it was the community that that uh, really brought me back into like shooting and, and taking photos. And it was only because, like, the community, like, like the photos that I take, like these are not photos that you're going to see in the Tribune. These aren't going to be photos that you're going to see necessarily in the, in the, the Chicago Reader or uh, on the news. Like these photos, a lot of the times, people don't know what are going on in these communities. And I try my very best to make sure that I cover what people don't see, right? Like I try to make sure that you see the corner stores that only get maybe looked at once or twice, the black and brown people that are in these communities every day that literally make these communities run. Like, the, like these are the foundation of these folks, right? So yeah, I, I don't probably go too far off, but <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody said, what artists would you like to, cool, what artists would you like to capture on film? Um, Hmm. Damn, what artists would I like to capture? You know what? Honestly, uh, I'm gonna hit you with some Chicago artists that I would love to capture. Um, only because like Chicago's creative like scene is so like enriching, like it's crazy, right? Um, I would love to shoot with Mother Nature. Um, I'm almost sure that's gonna happen. <laughs> um, but please look them up, Mother Nature. They are an amazing, amazing duo group. Um, black women, um, they when I say they doing thing like they are doing, they are two powerful MCs. Um, Heavy Crowns, look look up Heavy Crowns. Um, he's a, he's another extremely powerful artist that I would love to work with. Um, who else? Who else? You know what? Uh, I want to I, I want to work with Saba. I want to work with Saba um, just because I feel like on some West Side like terminology, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know, you be busy, you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, I definitely want to work with Saba. Um, I definitely want to work with Femdot again. Um, I, I, I definitely want to work with John Doe. If you do, and again, if y'all do not know what I'm talking about, Google these people right now. Look these people up right now. Um, I'm going to say Smino. I, I, if, you, if you know anything about St. Louis, Chicago and St. Louis are like cousins. And Smino is a good representation of that. Um, someone said, how do you decompress? Ooh, that's a good question. How do I decompress after documenting protests? Um, hmm. to be honest with you, uh, when I, so, and I'm glad somebody brought that up, right? Um, because protests, like going to protests, like it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's something that needs to be taken seriously, right? And so like the, a lot of things can happen. Like people get swiped up at protests, um, to this very day, like there's a there's a young man named Mohawk Johnson that's fighting a case right now that police basically are pinning on him, trying to say that he's some type of like menace like to society, like legit. They literally like worded this about this man, and it was because he was trying to advocate for folks at protests, right? And so um, I know when I get prepared to go to a protest, I pray, like I I, I truly pray, um, just because like. You, I've, I've literally been at like jail supports where like I'm trying to like you know advocate for you know uh, young people to, to to be released you know because the police they beat the hell out of a lot of young people this this, this past summer you know what I'm saying um, and it was because these young people were going to protest and 
it's something that I don't take like like right so I pray um I definitely just try to get my mind in, in tune uh I definitely pack up some stuff so you know I packed up goggles um you know I try to make sure I have like a battery or two um in my bag um uh, I try to have like mutual aid on me so like you know maybe water bottles um you know like uh signage so like you know in case people get arrested people have like the phone number to like you know call folks you know what i'm saying um i mean i could go that's a whole that's that's a lot of information to process but uh to get to the original point to decompress after fo- taking photos um I, I truly like chill out with my girlfriend um like, we watch goosebumps or like we meet some real big kids so you know we um we just really like not like we just we just chill, right? And, and and we just try to like understand the concept of like you do what you can. And for me, like the ability to create, the ability to tell stories through my photo, that's me trying to do what I can outside of like organizing as much as humanly possible or whatever. So um yeah, uh I think I'm gonna do um a couple more questions. And yes, please, like if y'all got more questions, like you know, throw them in, you know what I'm saying? Um like, I, I'm, I'm glad that I don't feel like, you know, this ain't just a waste of time. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, I'll keep throwing more questions in. Uh, it could be about, you know, photography or, you know, documenting stuff or, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, someone said, uh, do your other creative media to form each other while creating? Um, that's a good question. So I would say for me, I was a poet first. Um, I, I've always been a creative, but... I was a poet first, like a writer, writer. Um, like I was actually at like open mics, um, like at young Chicago authors that were play, um, hoping that I would be called up to, uh, you know, spit some poetry. Um, and so for me, um, I, I just wanted to really attach both. And it was really on accident, right? Like I, I just, you know, would take photos and then I would just like listen to like really like thought provoking music. So maybe I say Rashad, or, you know, some Chicago music, and I would be like, yo, like, this is almost like a soundtrack, you know what I'm saying, to like a movie. Like, and I, I, for some reason, my brain thinks like that, right? So when I, when I like, for example, like when I listen to uh, Pineapple Wildwood by John Walk, like, I really think about like, you know, uh, what are some real, like, if this was like a soundtrack for this song, like this was a movie or whatever, like, what would I see, you know what I'm saying? And like, I can like immediately, I just imagine like, you know, being out West, uh, almost being at the Garfield Conservatory, you know what I'm saying? Like, just chilling with folks, like, in the parking lot, you know what I'm saying? And, like, just capturing, like, Black joy, you know what I mean? And, and I feel like that's something that people don't really think about is Black joy and just, like, how we don't see enough of it, but we we, 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 we talk about it a lot, right? So, yeah. Um, someone said, what's a favorite piece of gear besides my camera? Hmm. Um, favorite piece of gear besides my camera? Him. honestly i think uh i honestly think it's my headphones um and that may sound weird but like uh i when i'm on the way to a protest or when i'm on the way to go shoot anything uh i really try to get into the vibe you know what i'm saying and so for me that really means that i'm just trying to really get my brain into like a creative mode i'm just trying to get into a really i guess reflective mode and so i'm you know, forever listening to music. So like, for example, when I have a protest, I, I put together a playlist of just like music that kind of gets me like very focused, you know, very amped up, very like, yo, like I'm, I'm going to this protest to advocate for, you know, black women, black and brown women, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to this protest to advocate for LGBTQ folks. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like once I'm like at the protest, like, you know, once I'm leaving, you know what I'm saying? You know, like I, I tend to cool out or I tend to zone out you know, uh, with music or whatever like that. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that's a probably, and that probably may sound weird or whatever, but I don't know. I, I, I can't, like, I hate headphones that have shorts in them. Like, I will stop my entire day if my headphone has a short to try and buy some more headphones. Like, that may be weird, but yeah. Um, someone said, why do I think photography could be so powerful? Um, You know what? I will answer that question with a, kind of slight story um this past year um there were like so many things that took place right like organizations like good kids mad city um asada's daughters let us breathe collective her chicago um I, I could go on like all of these organizations were out and 
they were doing all of these protests in the year 2020. And I promise you, you may have only heard about a handful on the news. And when when it came to like reading about these uh, things in like media platforms, like outside of maybe Southside Weekly and The Tribe, and maybe maybe a couple of others, a lot of people was getting information misconstrued about what was going on on the south and west side of Chicago, right? And so, um, you know, the photos that were coming out, and mind you, this is not just me, this is myself and other photographers and other creatives that are black and brown creatives in this Chicago community. Like when we went out, our goal was to make sure that we were taking photos and we were capturing things that you could not see on, on, on social media, right? Like you, you don't know about the fact that, you know, the, the, the police are like literally harassing people um, in West Inglewood for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know that, you know, the John Walt Foundation is doing mutual aid literally three times out of the month. You know what I mean? And photos, video, especially throughout COVID, like COVID changed everything. Um, and it changed everything in a lot of good ways and a lot of weird ways, but in the ways that are good, like a photo was able to tell a story. And I feel like even to my own photography, I feel like we really were able to like learn a lot from photos and just visuals. And so, um, I mean, my Instagram page, it, to be honest with you, like I look at it as something that it, it's a, it's a, it's a Instagram page or it's a photo page, but it's also an informational page, right? Like when you look at my photos, I'm talking to you about you know the gang database and why the gang database has over thirty thousand people, black and brown people's information put into a, um, a, a chart literally where like the police in the city harass these people where they can't even get jobs. And people have been fighting and advocating to have this database taken down for years, right? Or the fact that our, yeah, I could, I could just go on. <laughs> but um, I, I, I think honestly, um, for me telling like my photography saved me when I was honestly depressed and, and, and had suicidal tendencies and that wasn't not that long ago. And photography has always brought me back and it's always kind of like giving me like a outlet to talk. You know what I mean? And so for folks that maybe are afraid to talk, um, that could be a way to get into it. You know what I'm saying? For me, that was how I was able to get into it. You know what I'm saying? And like wanting to better my community and like show that, that the South and West Side of Chicago are just as beautiful as what people think is in Wicker Park or up north or downtown. Like that means a lot to me. So um, yeah, that was a really good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's, like I said, if you want to throw more questions in, I could like do like maybe two more. You know what I'm saying? Um, and and we can wrap it up or anything like that. Uh, uh, um, someone says, do I prefer to shoot action shoots or still shoots? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I would really prefer to just shoot, like, just anything, right? So, like, a uh, black, I think, honestly, as long as it's black and brown people, I don't care. Like, you know, a turn up or a Fifi, you know what I'm saying? Um, a wedding, um, um, a chess tournament, um, you know, uh, 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 someone, like, knock the fire hydrant off and just, like, water everywhere, like, you know, a, a, a little baby boys like standing there with no shirt on. <laughs> like, I, I think for me, like just really capturing, and I think someone said it earlier about like, you know, stock photos or like anything like that. Like Gordon Parks, you know, his photos are so powerful because they show, they, 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 they show black and brown people in ways that like we are not seeing right now, right? Like when, when you think about media, like we're either, you know, in slave movies or, you know, we're being like super sexualized and we're being like, you know, super over like objectified, you know, because of like everything that's been taking place. But like, you don't really see like the, the, the normalcy. You don't see like, you know, a grandma on her front porch just chilling, you know what I'm saying? Because like, it's a summer day, it's hot, you know what I'm saying? You don't see, you know, kids just like, like playing outside, you know what I'm saying? You don't see photos of that. And so like, I don't know, for me, I just like shooting all of it, right? Cause like protests, I love shooting protests, um, but I'm also, I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm also very scared of the police. Uh, so, like, I, I, when I go to protest, I, I'm very much so um, trying to be safe because I want everyone to be safe. But um, yeah, I think all around, like I said, if it's if it's dealing with like legit, like like just black excellence, 
not to be corny, but like if it's just dealing with like really dope black stuff, like that's that's where I, I love to shoot. Um, and yeah, I'll take this as a, as a as a this is a really good last question. I think. Do you have advice for young creators? Um, yeah, and, and I really hope folks hear me when I say this. Um, again, like like John Wall, his 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 style was being consistent, right? Like he. I dare say if you talk to anybody that is from Pivot Game, that was his thing, was being consistent. And that's one thing that I would definitely want to tell anybody is to be consistent. Um, be consistent in what you think that you want to do, right? So if you think that you're an actor or if you think that, you know, whatever it is that you really want to get into, like really, really just be consistent, right? Um, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Like do not let your friends laughing at you. Do not let um, your family telling you that you can't do it. Do not let judgment from people you don't know on social media or just anywhere. Like, if you have, if, if you believe in your heart that this is what you need to do, do that. Like, straight up. Like, I, I, I think that's for real, for real. Like, it, I was, I was scared to really use my voice, like how I'm using it now. Right. And so like when I first became a photographer, that was one thing I was scared of was like, man, what if I take up too much space or, you know, what if people laugh or what if people think I'm like, you know, uh, sensitive, like I'm this tall black dude, you know what I'm saying? And like, what if they think like I'm lame? And I just got to a point where I stopped caring. And like that point, like I think for like people, uh, like just like just people in general nowadays, like that's very, that's very like dual. Right. And so. I just stopped caring and I'm like, yo, this is me. Like when I, when I write my captions or when I'm taking photos and when I'm saying what I'm saying, like, I'm not saying it to the pool. I'm really, I'm definitely not saying it to be like, oh no, like smooth, poetic, you know, clout stuff. Like I'm, I'm truly talking to you. You know what I'm saying? Like how I would be talking to you like in person, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, like just be consistent and, and, and just like, don't be afraid. Um, and lastly, um, hopefully these aren't too corny of tips. But lastly, uh, and I'm also still trying to find this myself, but find a mentor. Like, find someone that's like big bro, big sis, big non-binary um, friend. Like, like, find someone that can that, 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 that you look up to, right? And, and, and truly, like, look at their work. Um, just, like, take in what, who they are, you know what I'm saying? Especially if it's positive style. And, and, and just, you know, like, learn from that, right? Like, for example, um, like one person I really wish could mentor me is uh painter Hebrew Bradley. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he was my art teacher uh for like two seconds, like when I was like a kid. I think I was like in eighth grade going into my freshman year. So I was very hard headed. Like I, I talked back and I was disrespectful. Um, uh, but Hebrew Bradley was like, yo, like he he damn near told me the same thing. He's like, just keep going, right? And so I know if I had like if he wasn't as busy, I'd be like, yo, like. Like, like let's chop it up. Like, I just want I just want to talk to you. You know what I'm saying? But, so just you know, just just like look for a big mentor. So um yeah, man. Thank y'all for watching. I hope I didn't bore y'all too much. Um uh on social media, y'all can find me on Instagram at Thought Poet. So um like I'm having a thought poet and like 77. Um Twitter, thought underscore poet 77. Um yeah, just look up Thought Poet. <laughs> Uh, you should be able to find me. Um, also, uh, if y'all like really trying to find me for real, for real, like I'm, I'm definitely out in these streets organizing. Um, please donate to organizations um, like Good Kids Mad City, uh, Her Chicago, Let Us Breathe Collective, um, Inglewood's Art Collective, Rage Inglewood, Imagine Inglewood. If please, if y'all can donate to. Um, but yeah, uh, thank y'all so much for attending. Um, yeah, and enjoy the rest of y'all day. Peace. Wow.